right, uh, we'll go to the teaching and learning call for today. My name is Dee Dee Hurricane. Um, and uh, if everyone could please sign into the Etherpad, the link has been placed in the chat. Make sure that everyone can see it. I've placed it back in there. And if everyone could sign in, that would be great. Uh, first off, we'd like to welcome you all here today. There seems to be quite a few people and it's really nice to see everyone. I know that it is the end of the school year for many of uh, many of the higher education institutions in our area. So graduation is being prepared for and uh, it's been very, very busy for many of us. So it's very nice for you to have joined us today. Um, let's go for some announcements. We've got uh, Open Aperio uh, registration is open. If you have not registered for Open Aperio, please do so. And I'll open that so everyone can see what it looks like. All right. And also, uh, SakaiCon registration is also open. So, and there's an online and watch party um, in Ann Arbor. Is anyone going? Has anyone made plans to attend in Ann Arbor? I'm, I believe a few. I'm going. But Are you? I'm, you know, only half hour away, so it's not a big deal for me. No, that's really yeah. great, though. But I'll be there, and I'll be. Uh, I'm planning it with Dr. Chuck, where there's going to be some, um, you know, social activities and lots of fun stuff at night, and it sounds like it's going to be fun. So that's great. Oh, I'm so glad. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and the next thing we can discuss is uh, Jerapaloozas. I'm going to select the first one and we can take a look at that. How does that sound? So we have no other items at this moment. I am logged in. I will put that in the chat as well so everyone can get to it. Great. All right. So resource allow size column to display folder space used. Hmm. It's going to end my camera for a moment. So that everyone can see that. Resource tool does not show how much space is used within a folder. In an effort to avoid or eliminate exceeding the site's resource quota, an instructor may Try to locate large files within the resource tool. This can be challenging when multiple layers of folders are used since the size column in the resources uh, tool shows the number of items in a folder and not the total space utilized by the folder. Let's take a look at that, shall we? Okay. Instructors sometimes inherit previous term sites from other instructors. They may not have clear knowledge of the content within the resources folder. So this can make it difficult if instructors try to locate the large files. So the proposal is we're going to alter the behavior of the size column so it shows a folder spaced used or an item count, as we were looking at that sample before. Um, and add a control toggle between the folder showing the number of items versus the space used. One suggestion is a radio control in the resources tool options tab. Dave asks, the um, web dev interface shows the file sizes. Would that be all allocated space used from the quota? Hmm, that's a good question. shows the number of items in the folder, but not the evaluate, evaluate the subfolder content. Um, any subfolder is counted as one item. To be the, of the most value, this features request use case, a folder shown space should reflect the sum of its file sizes and the sum of its subfolders used. Feedback? I'm trying to think it through. Yeah, I'm actually, I'm looking right now at what it does currently, 
And it looks like the, um, the items is only on the folders, right? So the, the individual files already show size. Um, but I do think it would be useful to have total the sum at the folder. Lamar, are you looking at 22 or are you looking at 19 or? I'm looking at 22, I think. Let me see. And one of our demo servers. Are... Yeah, it's no, that's fine. Mm -hmm. I just thought I'd ask the question because I wasn't. Yeah, because I mean, that's kind of expected from like, you know, most operating systems, right? You see some, not the number of items. Well, well no, iPads them. and iPhones don't tell, want to tell you what size anything is. You have to go really hunting for it. Correct. Can people hear, <laughs> can people hear me okay? I just enabled the mic. Yay. Yeah. 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 Good. I can hear you, Adam. So, so one of my comments on this is on the Mac, you need to go into view settings in order to show folder sizes within Finder. And then once that's toggled, it always has to calculate and recalculate. So I think right. one of my concerns is if this were in options for resources and you set it, you will forget it. And then I'm not sure how frequently Sakai would have to regenerate folder sizes as resources get added or deleted. Ooh. I almost want this to be, I almost want this to be a toggle within the resources view. And whenever you reset the tool, the toggle gets set to off. So effectively, my default view of resources is not to calculate folders. But when I ask to calculate folders, please do it then. So that way I can see it in the view I'm currently looking at. Yeah, it sounds like just in time, like I want to know that now. I don't need to know it every single time I actually get to the resources folder. Exactly. And that effectively is the equivalent of clicking on options and showing the folder size or the folder properties. Yeah. I'm just throwing a toggle within the view saying, show me the calculation in this current view. Now, that might, you might want that to stick for the session and not necessarily the particular folder that I'm looking at. So if I toggle that and drill into a folder, I want that to apply for the drill down as well because I'm hunting for large files. Mm. And I don't want it to turn off every time I navigate. Where would that toggle? Yeah. Be? Under the action menu or would it be something that's sort of doesn't take you to another menu. It would be right next to display columns. So you would have show folder sizes with a radio, with a. Uh, oh, I see. Okay. So to the left of display columns, that's where I personally would put it because display columns modifies the view and the toggle switch to show folder sizes would modify the view. So you're thinking here in display columns? In the list or next to it? I'm thinking next to it. To the okay, list so it would just be, of display yeah, so it, columns, you would have an immediate access toggle switch that would say show folder sizes. Yes, no. OK. Hmm. I personally think as a usability that this is mm. my opinion now, that it would actually be irritating. Um, I find it irritating on PCs that I can go to a, the folder sizes and cannot get the accumul cumulative total of that folder size um, until I drill down into it and then I can see those. So just for anybody who's, when you're looking at folder sizes, I'll just go here for a moment. There's no size listed. You have to drill down and look to get sizes. That sounds like a bug. <laughs> <laughs> so, but to have to turn on something would be, I find it irritating now that it's not displaying it, 
Right. Um, I, I, I would find it irritating to have to go turn on something that's already being calculated. Right, but that, it's not already being calculated. That, that, that's the point. It's not already being calculated because that takes computational energy. Right. Ah, I see. Right. So that it's the idea of making it behavioral based on the user rather than actionable based on back end programming. It's just going to do it all the time, even if people aren't using it. Well, doesn't it have to? Hmm. I mean, well, when you do a file already... upload, it checks the file size to make sure it's not this so gargantuan thing. Quota, it does that, correct? So that when that occurs. So when you check your quota, the, right. um, the sizes are calculated, correct? Right, but it does the calculation at, at the that time moment. you request it. At the moment, yeah. So. Hmm. Yeah, because there's no sense in actually, you know, I don't know if Matthew's got any so feedback the, on it, but. So maybe the, the, instead of, you know, instead of only check quota, it should be, you know, file sizes um, and be a part of that rather than be displayed all the time if that's a calculation. So maybe a suggestion is to put that function in the quota tab. That's a, a suggestion. It's a thought. Because if you have, if you're, if you're digging around for, well, how much, how, 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 how big is, you know, what, what's the proportion anyways, then maybe I go to, to the check quota area and turn that on and then come back and see the size. Well, wouldn't the, what does the check quota display? Just one thing, correct? What it's, it yeah, it just displays yeah, it's just the total percent the of the quota designated course. for the site. It does tell you the number of, it does tell you the, 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 the size too. It doesn't just do a percentage, which is nice. So maybe that, that behavior should be then part of the, as one, uh, that they wouldn't have to come back, but from this page, it would be display, display, display quota at the same time, since that's the, that's the push. That's the instigation of it right is that you're in there because your fol folders are huge and you don't right. want them to be so you're doing that probably because you got to check quota and you can't upload something so or you're trying to clean out the resources and think okay well like i don't right. need all this stuff in here i'm teaching the course somebody else taught i don't know what all this stuff is there's these huge files or these you know what are these small things it gives you information about what you might want to decide to delete true Oh, Terry says in the chat, she says, showing the folder size could also point out the presence of hidden files. Brilliant, Terry. Terry's question to earlier than that, can it be put in the folder title row, which up here, where is this what you're talking about right up here, um, Terry? Yes, okay. So she's thinking of the... Um, Oh, right. The, the, on that the same parent. row, which would be a very likely and reasonable place, in my opinion. But what do I yeah. think? Well, and, and theoretically, that would add up to, right? All, all the subsidiary things should add up to whatever the size is that shows there. Right. So maybe that button is file so is folder size, and it goes right here, and you click on it, and then it displays the calculated folder size. Right. But it doesn't. If it doesn't, there are hidden files, which, okay, so there's a third pathway that you're thinking. Terry, I'm not sure I understand what you mean. Are you saying that if there are hidden files, the hidden files wouldn't be included in the size designation? Well, um, if you inherit a course and the previous instructor, whatever, hid files and you can't see them, a differential in the size between between the folder size and the cum uh, the sum of the different files in there would point out that there are hidden files in the course that you need to try to get access to. Right. So what you're saying is it's possible that the add the the adding up of all the sizes may not disclose the, the total folder. hidden. Right. Okay. Right. And um, having it like in the in the title row in the uh, there where the other sizes are would give you, boom, you got, you see it right there. You don't have to go to the quota thing or 
uh, hit a calculate button, but you've got all the information on the top. It's surfaced and you can see it. Hmm. I, I'm not really sure. I understand Adam's point about the calculation factor, but um, but there are a lot of things in resources that need to be surfaced. And this is just one of them. Um, so yeah, we might need to have that conversation, but resources has been minimalized so much that it's almost not functional in the in a way that, a powerful way that it could be. Okay, so are we saying now that we've reviewed it um, that we need to take into these considerations? What would you normally do here, Wilma? Um, well, I'd try to come up with some sort of consensus on the recommendation from the group. If there isn't one, then I would just say we looked at it and here are some of the suggestions that were proposed. We can't find a best, you know, best suggestion, then I would put two or three, maybe. Is there some actionable piece that is agreeable on the part of those present that would seem like it's lower hanging fruit without making it overly complicated or I think everybody agrees that they would like an option to be able mm -hmm. to view the size of folders. I think maybe there's a little bit of disagreement on where it should be and if it should be like calculating all the time because that could be a performance issue or if it's an on demand kind of calculation. What if, what if we just agreed that we want it to be present in an option terminal <laughs> and then sort of felt like maybe developers could feed back to us about the performance potential issue. I'd agree. All right. So you don't need to watch me type, so I'm going to uh, write my notes down and I'll update it later. One second, please. I'm not sure if there would be or not. I don't know why it's like set up like that. Like if you, you know, like it, it shows currently on there's a, if you have a folder, it shows the number of items that are in the folder. But if you click on the folder, it shows the size of each individual item in that column. So that column changes from the right. account to a, a actual size. And that that's kind of unusual, I guess. And maybe it was because of performance and maybe mm. not. I don't know. I, I don't see if you have to actually count the files, it feels like it can accumulate the sizes and display a total. But um, I know I know resources is gets really um, can get really slow if it has a lot of files in it. Because of how it's implemented, mm -hmm. though. So it probably does look at every file in the database and accumulating the size would not add too much. But I don't know about the option of being able to like switch between the count and the and the size that it feels like you want one or the other. I don't know. Yeah, the toggle that was suggested in this um, JIRA, mm -hmm. I'm not sure I'm crazy about because I think like Adam said, you would probably set it once and forget it. Mm -hmm. So it almost seems like something that should be a little easier to get to so that you would make the conscious decision or just have it be one or the other. Yeah. If it's buried under the options tab, it seems like you would set it and forget it and then think that you set it for one course and then forgot that you didn't set it for another thinking you had and wondering, you know, uh, but if it's obvious, if it's surfaced a little bit yeah. better. You... That's an easier place or that's an easy thing to forget that you changed yeah. and then wonder why is this is a bug? You know, my two courses look different um, when it's not really, but you think it's right. And we can right. look at, like if we could display like just both in that column, like you display the size and then you display the count in parentheses or something, and hmm. then it's just figuring out like how it's going to sort that column. Is it going to sort on the count or sort on the on the size? 
Matthew, which one of those would be easier? Having a toggle that we surface or just throwing both sets of data on there and then having the back end decide, okay, I'm gonna just sort this this way. Um, I say easier not to make it easier, just in terms of fluidity. I, I would think if the performance isn't a concern, just implementing it as is and just putting the size and the count in the same column and then just leave, maybe leaving the sort on on the one or the other would, would be easiest, but I don't know. Uh, I don't know how it would work. We'd have to, um, I know we can easily generate a site with like thousands of files and test it out. So whoever was working on this, it wouldn't be that, it shouldn't be that hard to, to try it out and see how it works. I'm okay with Matthew's suggestion too. And I know there's the the hidden file issue, but it already tells you how many files are there. I mean, it's I don't know if having a size accumulated size would matter that much. And is this I don't know if this is a uh, this column is shown to the students or not, but probably is. If it is now, if it says like seventy five items now, then it's like I don't know. If there's a security concern there. They really should only be accumulating what they can actually see anyway. But I would think that if there's hidden files that would say, it's, you know, if there's less files there than the instructor would see, but I haven't tested that. All right. So I was just typing up um, another uh, page, just a generalization. So the resources can be slow and there's consensus as folder sizes are needed. Um, the toggle uh, was concern uh, about the suggestion is that the um, it could be forgotten under the options and is course dependent, correct? Um, there is also a concern about sorting selection and performance concerns over the um, the calculation. Okay. Also agreed. And there's also a secondary question is if the student sees an accumulated size and count that is different than the instructor. Mm -hmm. And if they do, that should be the correct one for that right. student. Say that again, Matt. I'm sorry. Well, it should be the correct one for that student, um, including the hidden file consideration. So, like, an instructor should maybe see 100 files. Maybe the student only sees 50 files. If the, the items. if the control were in the UI instead of uh, options, then the control could potentially be hidden from students. If student behavior is not applicable, then you can control around that by showing or hiding the control. I, I don't know if uh -huh. folder size and count has utility to students other than instructors looking for large files, which is what the original JIRA is for. Um, one final aside and not to throw uh, not to get off on a tangent, but does Dropbox share the same intrinsic code as resources? And would it be beneficial for students to be able to see folder sizes within student content Dropboxes? Shares the same code. That's question one is easy to answer. It shows uh, sizes right now. Um, the same way, the UI is pretty much the same. I don't know what it shows to students. This would be applicable to Dropbox as well. So whatever the changes is, it would show you like the, probably the, the, the disk size of all the folders that every student Dropbox has. to the instructor view.
but it's probably worth noting that somewhere in like the test plan or something that this is also going to impact Dropbox. Yeah. And actually seeing the number of items in a folder would be helpful too for faculty in the Dropbox area or you know, how, by how much the, the folder size is. I guess it shows the size already in Dropbox. It was number, the same as um, resources, right? Number of items. Yeah, right. Yeah. The count would be the count of items. It would work the same exact way. It would probably think, work, yeah, the same I way. I think it would be useful in both places to see the total file. Agreed. Yeah. Terry asks a question in the chat. Is there a major need for students to see resources when they can be linked to the lessons page? Um, I know in our institution that uh, faculty do like to drop the resources um, folders on the lessons pages as well as embedded content. So. Yeah, and many many of the faculty do in our institution as well. Hide the tool, hide the resources tool that as well. I think Apple did that when they came out with the iPhone first. Pardon? You couldn't find your files anywhere if you want to find files on the phone when it came out first. You're like, where's all this stuff being stored? Sorry, you know how this Wow. All right. Are you saying so. we're like Apple? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah, we're we're trending. <laughs> okay. So, all right. So I've put in this these comments, um, and I'm going to save them. Is there anything else you would like me to add to this? And if so, you can feel free to comment as well. Um, but uh, and Wilma, if you could direct me on what we would do from this point. Um, so after you um, comment on it, you don't have to do it now. If you want to go back after the call and comment on the JIRA, make sure to take the TL label off and put the TL reviewed label on so we know we've already looked at that one. That's something I usually do after the call. And I would just move to the next JIRA. I put a few notes in the etherpad too. Um, you know, DD, if you're writing up notes of your own, if there's anything I left out, if you want to paste that in. So um, we have it in the etherpad. I don't know if you're talking. I can't hear you. Uh, I am. I have a hardware issue going on. My apologies. Um, okay. Okay. Well, this so, one looks like was reported by Dave, so maybe Dave wants to walk us through it. Um, so I didn't know if this one had gotten. I guess it had gotten reviewed. Is just adding a publish date option to a course site. So this is the idea that faculty get all their stuff prepped or. Um, they're ready to go and the only thing they have to do is hit that publish now button but for whatever reason they don't want to publish it you know four months in advance but they'd like to set a date to when the course publishes and a time and so the idea then would be that in site info under that publish option and I think David Bauer had mentioned that they had implemented something very similar at, uh, at Dayton's implementation um, that essentially lets the instructor publish the course um, so that you know whenever the official date opens for the course that rather than relying on instructor to actually go and hit the publish now button or change the publish option the site just publishes 
itself. Um, oh, cool. It looks like, yeah, it looks like uh, they have a pull request ready. Yeah. yeah. We're really excited about this because we would like to implement this so that our faculty who seem like they're way too busy with all kinds of other things, sometimes very validly, that we could just go in and set the date for them and the date would just publish their course. And so it would be a, it would be a value added thing to our faculty. I'm so in favor of this. Yeah, great. I think the way that David Bauer, I think somewhere they've got a video somewhere that actually shows their faculty how it works, um, which is pretty slick. Um, I think someone had followed up and made a suggestion about even doing an unpublished date as well. But I do think there's possibility that there could be confusion about adding that. And then I still fight our faculty on, I published my course, doesn't that mean everything's published? And they still have assessments and assignments and discussions all set to draft. They're like, why isn't it published everything? <laughs> because, That's a different problem. Because we kind of like tell, when we are training people, we tell them that the um, publish means you've unlocked the classroom door. It did not mean that you delivered your assignments. Right. It, and see, that's a place where just language across tools could be different, where you're, you know, you're unlocking the course or, you know, versus publish, which we'd use in lots of other tools to say mm -hmm. that we're making them available to students. I tell our faculty there's lots of granularity to Sakai. Um, so, you know, you write a page because you're authoring a book doesn't mean you're publishing the book. You've just finished that page. Anyways, we were very much in favor of this as an option. I think I filed it a long time ago. Yeah, I, we didn't have any um, specific JIRAs that were brought up, so I just did a filter. That's where some of these came from. So they're kind of random. <laughs> yeah, that's my fault. Great, this is a great improvement. Um, so I think it's good that now we all know about it. I, I like this one. So um, I can uh, just say that we have reached a consensus in our team that, that um, everyone agrees this is a this is a go. All in favor. Say aye. Aye. <laughs> aye. Aye. Uh, all right. Um, I can, I'll just write the consensus was reached on this one. 33963. Awesome. Okay. All right, moving on. All right, and our next one. We have rubrics, aggregate rubric score, view and export. And wait, look who reported this. Hmm. Dave. <laughs> it says right in it says right in the thing anybody can add anything. And there's the the, the list. We can look at the list too. I don't we don't have to look at this one necessarily. Okay. Well, it, it is something to look at. So this is the idea that somehow there's a means of providing aggregate data across a rubric so that if an instructor want to see how all students did on a particular item that's being scored against a rubric, they could see that data. Um, the, the eventuality would be like if if institutions are using those rubrics to look for benchmarks across, you know, for accrediting data, that sort of thing, then you could provide that assessment data across a very specific, you know, benchmark item that you know all students have to do in a course or something. Or um, in a group. Okay. Or, or yeah, or in a group. Um, but so rather than seeing each student's set of data, you would actually be able to aggregate that and say, well, let me see how, you know, how do they do across that. Now, do we already have that, and I just don't know it? Because you're showing. I don't know. If, I don't remember if I put. I think these are. I went to the images to show them off. Uh -huh. Oh, this is you know showing that criterion there. I don't know if that. Here. The images yeah. say UD. So this might, just... might be a Dayton contribution as well. Okay. I think they had some improvements for rubrics that they were working on. Okay. 
Oh, that's. I think that's the part I did, I I had added. Yeah, in the in the comments there, um, Leah Bergman said that uh, University of Dayton has developed a similar feature, and they want to share it with the with the community. And there's some videos there. Oh. There's an aggregate summary report. Um, limited to assignment assessment form or gradebook item. Viewable by admins and instructors. They don't have an export yet, but that's coming. Oh. So, very cool. I didn't. I, I had heard this, but I, I'd forgotten. So um, you never know how far they've gotten. Look at the dates. Yeah. <laughs> oh wow, that's been uh, that's almost a little, been a little yeah. while. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a lot of people seem to be excited. So, uh, circle back with them and see where we are with that. Because uh, yeah, very very good addition. We all agree that that's a phenomenal idea on this puppy, right? Uh, I agree. Hi. Hi. Yeah. What do we have here? We have going down to check the chat. Um, have a great day. Bye, Adam. Um, anybody else? Uh, any feedback on this particular chair? Christina said that it, she says she's says it's useful for collecting course assessment data. Hey, Christina. Thank you. All right. All right. I'll update that one. Um, with uh, oh, okay. Wait, we have Christine talking. But you want? Go ahead. <laughs> no, he just said it is useful for collecting course data. I'm saying it it would be useful. We don't have it yet, so I can't say it is useful for it. Gotcha. But I can see where it would de very definitely would be if we can get a aggregate rubric for say the final research paper in comp one, collect that from yes. comp one classes and boom, we can show comp one is teaching writing. Yes, or you could use it year over year, or you could use it to compare sections of courses teaching the same material, you know, just say, oh, well, this is how those were, I mean, that, that becomes, you know, actionable data that you can use. Where would you see the year over year data being aggregated? I didn't make a year for that. <laughs> really? It would, well, someone, it, it, it would be on someone's desk in two printouts. I was going to say, that sounds like that'd be on a folder on my bookshelf. Remember, we make, make small steps. Many small steps make a larger step. So, but we are comfortable with this, and um, we don't currently have the export function. Okay. All right. Well, I do think that we should uh, definitely move forward for this one. Okay. Davey agrees. Excellent. Phenomenal. I'm looking at the pull request right now. It looks like it got marked as draft. Yeah, because there were some changes. Um, just, I'll circle back with, with Adrian and Earl about this to see if where that is, because this would be really good to get in. I mean, it really helps. To, it would help to, you know, we stop and think about trying to inform more people than just faculty about what Sakai can do. It provides a space to say, well, I can pull that aggregate data for you, about, you know, on this particular benchmark item, you know, to you know, upper level deans or program directors. Yeah, and right now that's a question we don't have a really great answer to. I actually had someone compliment uh, uh, Samago just the other day when they were trying to pull data for um, a, a, a state pilot for some assessment data and they're like, Canvas doesn't pull this out like this. Sakai really does a good job with that. I was impressed. Really? Yeah. That's wonderful to hear, Dave. Yeah. It was really great. She was like, yeah, this is really She said she took it back to the state admins, and they're like, how did you get this data like this? This is great. She's like, it's just Sakai. It's what we use. They're like, Canvas doesn't do this. 
and we're the only we're the only Sakai using school. <laughs> really. It's always nice to hear somebody say we can do something that Canvas doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> definitely. Music to my ears. And Canvas, you can't even pull anything out of new quizzes right now. You can't? It's, uh, no, you can't export anything. It's a feature request. Yeah, well, they're still working on it. Maybe 2023. Oh. Okay. You, you you can if you scrape if you scrape this the web, we have web scrapers to kind of do that. They take forever and they're not as good. <laughs> well, this is a recording, so we're going to pause on bashing other places. Oops, things. sorry. Um, we're going to move on to the next things on the list. Yeah. Okay. Um, Wilma. If you don't mind directing me, what would be the next steps that we take from here? Um, well, I would ask people if they have a JIRA that they would like to look at. And if not, I would go through that filter to find one that we think mm -hmm. looks interesting. Okay. Does anyone have one? Christina does, I bet you. Yeah, Christina normally has a couple of years. She has a list. <laughs> <laughs> she, she has her own filter. Not everybody so has one. Christina, filter. if you want to propose one, that would be great. So no, or should we just move on to the list that we have on the teaching and learning filter? Yeah, you can pull from that list. Or you yeah, she's got the, yeah. I'm trying to pull up my list of things oh, okay. that are bugging me and my faculty. Oh, okay. Let's so hear that. Trying to quick sort, sort through and figure out what's not um, already had any action done on it. <laughs> I see Miguel typing. Miguel might have one. Excellent. Oh, yeah. Oh, the role swap. Yeah. Did you guys remember seeing the, the message in the list about the role swap? I did see that. I also saw that. I, I like the role swap idea. As uh, Bernardo said, that does match um, some other LMS uh, feature, how they do it. And um, I think the biggest challenge of that would be to make ensure that uh, that user is cleaned up uh, fully and as I don't think there's any way in Sakai to to clean up a user uh, uh, maybe there is now but I didn't think I don't know if there was if there's like APIs for every tool that would remove all the data if you called them for instance or oh you know that would that that's a sounds like the hardest part to me of implementing role swap is yeah that would get pretty messy um, you know you want to be able to delete a user and delete everything associated with that user and if you could do that you can do a really good role swap. Because you have to be able to reset that user. Right, but that sounds like a top down design rather than a bottom up. Yeah. I know there's been similar features implemented for, um, I think, some other services, like the, how we, we adjust the time and stuff, like uh, that, how they added that, um, you know, where you can update all the times of uh, the next uh, when you copy, import a site. Mm hmm. Um, a little similar to that, I think, but and there was there was some ideas for having a better cleanup of content, and uh, it might have got implemented with something like that. But uh, I don't know if Miguel knows or anyone on the call knows if uh, a full cleanup was ever um, implemented. Usually, we try not to clean up in Sakai. It's something that you remove stuff, and stuff still sticks around in the database, so you can easily recover it. But for this, we're going to need a uh, we're going to have to. Have, have a full cleanup feature. But it would be a good feature to have that too, I think. But Christina placed uh, Jira in the chat. She did, and I am displaying it now. 
I said, I, I just found two of the standing issues I have that don't haven't had any movement, but I don't know if they're things that require TNL discussion other than saying, yes, this is a problem and someone should fix it. Okay, this speaks mm. to the assignments and the grade override options with group submissions. So is this more of a case of adding this functionality to the new grader? Because it already appears in the classic grader? Yes. Classic grader has a way like for a group to say, okay, group member A did more of the work, they're gonna get more points, or group member B did the drop off mm -hmm. the face of the earth and we're gonna give them lower. Ah, okay. So that's in the classic grader, but it that that functionality does not exist in the new grader. That's very subtle. But impactful if you are doing group yes. grading. I think I remember having someone actually this last semester asked me about group grade functionality and assigning a different grade to someone. It didn't occur to me that they might need to check the classic grader for the interface. So does everyone agree that this is, you know, can be moved forward and that uh, TNL agrees that this is an important feature that was available in the, in the classic grader but is not available in the new grader if that's all we have to decide i think it's important if we have to decide how it's implemented in the new grader that's a little more complicated i think that's going to need a lot more thought yeah um um for suggestions on that do we make a new tier for to to have that in, or do we want to, how would we move forward with that, Wilma? Direct me. Sorry, can you repeat the question? I was multitasking. Sure. No, I'm doing the same thing, actually, that's the problem, is um, in this uh, wonderful uh, JIRA we have here for 43348, we, um, we all agree that it's important and should move forward. It's, and Dave brought up the good question of how we would move forward with um, this, do we have to decide how it would be implemented to make that yeah. happen here? I think or... we should ask Adrian because I know he was working on this. Um, Let's so... ask Adrian. I think that's good too because there's, I mean, we only have so much real estate. Great. So we can ask him where he's at and if he needs help figuring out where to put those pieces, then maybe we can. You know, either kick it over to the UX group or we could have you know some time set aside on this call to kind of try to map out where it makes most sense. Um, but maybe he's already kind of solved that problem, in which case we don't need to. Oh, no, that's true. So, um, so I would ask Adrian first where he's at with it. Okay. It might be that if it's something that's not going to get implemented quickly that you may want to like um, say that you know that if you are using if you want to do individual overrides you have to use the this is you have to switch the classic grader maybe you have some message in there somewhere but yeah I, I, if like so it's not going to be out until like for a year or something but I don't know how or if it'll never make it you know I, I would think it would eventually but I don't know the complication of this feature. I see the I'm texting the Adrian right now. So. <laughs> You're texting. <laughs> That's the way to handle it. So, hey, Adrian, um, on SAK 4 3, yeah. Because I can we're, see we're, we're, just putting a line under there saying, you know, if you need to assign individual grades, please use this classic grader, you know, and then eventually that line will fill in with the feature or something. But that's yeah. probably what should have happened. We can always 
connection to Jira. Broke up there. We could always make that suggestion in Jira as well. Yeah. It's yeah. The temporary workaround that could be easily backported and uh, until. But if he's way along on a fix, then it's not. Because it's, I know we've done that in the past when we've had user interface changes that you've had to alert people about, and we've removed them a couple years later when they actually were fixed. OK. Well, we have about six minutes left. Or is the um... Terry, you have a, 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 a Jira out on the chat. Um, or is that just from the one that uh, Christina was talking about? Eight. And if not, we'll put this in the parking lot for next week. One sec. I can't, I, I can't copy and paste. So just taking a quick look at this one, we've got the uh, greater, uh, the new greater saving grade without closing feedback comments wipes out the comments. One of my faculty found this one. He would be trying to grade quickly, so he'd have comments up and he'd be typing up his whole thing, but he wouldn't click that done button. He'd just go immediately down and hit save. And because the comments weren't closed separately, bye bye comments. It sounds more like a critical to me that something should happen. It should warn you that you know you have unsaved comments minimally if you can't figure out what to do with them. Right. That could sort of be behavior that somebody might expect of a modal that they're on the page. So I'm just going down to the save. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I feel. Yeah. I see that everywhere. It should it, that could be just something client side that just checks to see and when you hit the submit button that you, you have, have comments, do you want to save them? Done. Yeah. yeah. Or you have comments, click the close button or whatever. Yeah. Please please make sure to click done or remove your comments or something like that. Yeah. It, unless it's something we want to just save the comments when you click the comments. I don't know this this UI. But maybe you want to just save the comments and assume it's done. Um, I don't know if that's the case. Do we remember, is there anything at the bottom of the comment box? Or is it just the close button and that's you type your comments and you just, like, I can't remember if there's anything at the bottom of the comment box, if there's a done button or, or a save button. Done. What's that? Done. Oh, done. Done. <laughs> yeah. Done, done, done. Done. Does it need a done button? She, I think she was saying there is a done button there. Yeah, but does it need it? I mean, oh. is it done? Well, if we remove the done button and people just hit the save button, and yeah. as is, then they're not going to get the comments saved. Well, they, they, they should. I mean, if you remove the done button, then it should save when you hit either the save buttons and just save it. But I agree. I, I agree. think there's that no need to nice. the done button in case the comments aren't the last thing they're doing. Uh, so in case you're commenting and then grading. Yes. Oh. Or commenting and then adding an attachment and then allowing Our feedback. Submission. We shouldn't allow people to choose what kind of workflow they want to have. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't know what happens when you click this feedback comment button. Yeah. Uh, it's a little box that opens. Yeah, it opens that box that's right there. The instructor summary comments oh. feedback yep. box. And then if they just go over there and click save. And their, comments, and their comments are gone. Yes, comments, their comments are, gone. are gone. All their great writing and prose. I think it should, yeah, it should warn you that, you know, please click the done button on your comment or, you know, to continue or something. That 
would be. You have, un you have unsafe work. Save yeah. or cancel. I think that should be a critical because that sounds like it's already lost people work. Yes. Well, only Tony. Well, as far as we know. Yeah. All right. We can update that and make that a critical. Mm -hmm. um, we are about two minutes out. Um, oh, Wilma has updated the uh, chat. Uh, Adrian says the group override issue is on his to-do list, not started, but not forgotten. Okay. Excellent. Now, do, you, um, do we have any others that we'd like to bring over for next time that we all talk? Did I miss any that were in the chat? Fantastic. Okay, we have a, our next upcoming meeting is planned for for June 1st. Currently, it is a Jirapalooza, but we're working on other things maybe. Um, it is a tough time of the year for all of us. I'm sure everyone is busy, but I'm really glad that you could all show up here today. Um, thank you for being with us and have a great week. Thanks, Judy. Great job. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Appreciate it.